Glenn Beck Program. There is a... Um... There's a guy that has written a book called Start With Why that if you have never read it or you don't know the theory, I mean, just just go online and uh, watch Simon Sinek's um, uh, video from TED Talks. Truly game-changing um, in its philosophy. Well, he has a new book out uh, called Leaders Eat Last, and uh, he is joining us now. Hi, Simon. How are you, sir? Hi, Glenn. How are you? I'm very good. Can you um, uh, take us take us through what you think is coming over the next five years? Well, we have the greatest leadership opportunity in America that we've had probably definitely since the end of the Cold War, but maybe even since World War II. You know, we have a leadership vacuum in America. Um, no. Neither party. Oh, it's true. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> not in politics and not in business is there anybody that's sort of offering us a vision of the future brighter than the one we have now in a terms so clear that we can imagine it in our own mind's eye. And so what I wrote about is what, what conditions have to be met for someone uh, to stand up and lead us the way we want to be led. So I hope that that will happen in the next five years. I remain optimistic that, that someone uh, will emerge and actually, and actually restore sort of faith in this country in a, in a clear direction. I think so, too. Uh, so how do you, um, uh, what, what, what conditions uh, have to be met? Well, the, fundamentally, um, you know, Things like trust and cooperation um, are essential for our society or any company or organization to advance and do well. Uh, the problem with those concepts is, is they're not instructions. We can't simply say to somebody, trust me. We can't simply point to a record and say, see, trust me. You know, we, we can't simply instruct two people to cooperate, and they will. That's not how innovation or progress happens. Trust and cooperation are both feelings. And so the question I ask is, where do those feelings come from? I had the great... Um, honor of spending time with the men and women in uniform who volunteer to serve our country. And I kept meeting people who would be willing to sacrifice themselves to save the lives of people sometimes they don't even like. We, we don't like to give up credit for things. Um, and so my question was, how can they trust each other so deeply? And what I started to learn was it's the environment. It's not that they're necessarily uh, better people. It's that all of us can have that if we work in the right environment. We're social animals. Set the environment right. Um, and bad people are capable of good things and set the environment wrong and good people are capable of bad things. But it seems like everything in society is setting the environment towards the bad things. It, it, you, you, you nailed it. That's the problem. Um, the environment, the right environment, is what I like to call a circle of safety. And basically what it means is we um, have to feel that the people with whom we live or the people with whom we work uh, won't stab us in the back when we turn around. You know, there's values in group living and group working. It means I can fall asleep at night and trust that uh, someone else will watch for danger. If I don't trust you, it means I can't fall asleep at night. And so this is really the purpose of leadership. Leadership sets the tone. And the great leaders, the ones who are able to build a circle of safety, an environment in which we naturally thrive, are the ones who would be willing to sacrifice themselves for us, the ones who would be willing to give up their perks or their bonuses or, their, or whatever advantages they have when danger threatens the tribe to protect the tribe. And when we feel, when we feel that, our, that our leaders would, would, will put us first, then we will sacrifice for them. Now, we live in a world right now where that is the complete opposite. For example, great leaders would never sacrifice their people to save the numbers, but the, we live in an environment where people always get sacrificed to save the numbers. You know, um, This is the reason we have such visceral contempt for some of these banking CEOs with their disproportionate salaries. It's not the numbers. It's that they have violated the very deep-seated definition of what it means to be a leader. In other words, we know that they allowed their people to be sacrificed for them to, to get their big bonuses or their salaries. In fact, sometimes they sacrifice their people to keep those numbers high. But if we can, you, I mean, but that's that's what offends us. I mean, would you be offended if I gave if we gave a hundred and fifty million dollar bonus to Nelson Mandela? No. How about a two hundred and fifty million dollar bonus to Mother Teresa? Got an issue with that? No. It's because we know that they would be willing to sacrifice themselves for their people. And so, as human beings, we react. We react to the the environment we're in. We react to the tone the leaders set. And if that tone is about putting themselves before us then that creates an environment where everybody puts themselves before each other, and we get what we have right now. Well, 